right, back to the business toolkit. And this is a definite for all you guys taking HL. Uh, critical path is back under the new syllabus. And from experience, it is causing lots of issues out there. So hopefully this resource will be useful. Thank you. Quick summary of what critical path analysis CPA actually is. Project management tool. Now take a construction project. Think of a company building 200 houses. Now to complete that project on time, because obviously think cash flow. While you're building those houses, cash is leaking out of the business and nothing's coming in until those houses are actually sold. Yes, it is possible to sell houses before they're finished. You know, large discounts are normally offered to encourage people to buy what they call off plan in the UK. You go look at the plans and basically buy it and pay your cash over. Um, but you know, cash flow is an issue. You need to get the houses built, get them on the market, get them sold to get the cash coming back in. So you need to finish the project on time. So all you actually do is break down those 200 houses into the individual activities required to build them. Plumbers, electricians, bricklayers, roofers, ground workers, etc., etc., etc. You estimate how long each activity takes. Now, some of those activities are going to be critical, some are non-critical. So, for example, if you have to hire a crane, that's from an outside company, you may have to make sure that all of the other jobs are completed, ready for that crane to be there. If not, the crane will turn up and you're not ready for them and they'll just go away and they may not be available for another month, two months. So it's critical activities cannot be delayed. Non-critical activities can be delayed. Okay, so keep this simple. Have a look at what we've got here, points one to five. It breaks it down for you. Now, crucial pointers for you guys. The critical path is the longest route through Okay, the diagram. Now, that's going to be important when you come to calculate and manipulate the diagrams, which will be coming up later in the video. Now, if there's any delay to the activities on the critical path, the whole project will be delayed. Now, where this becomes an issue for businesses, if you win the contract to construct something, be it 200 houses or be it a stadium. Now, Wembley Stadium in the UK, an Australian firm won the contract some years ago. Now, unless you are functionally stupid, the people awarding the contract will agree a completion date for the project. And if that completion date is not achieved, there'll be financial penalties for every day, every week, over and above the actual agreed date. Now, that happened with Wembley Stadium, and it got to stage in the end. The FA Football Association in the UK had to waive some of the penalties. They're becoming so large, it was so far over the projected time to complete it. So critical activities, no floats, no spare time, have to be completed. Okay, so the minimum amount of time for the whole project completed. So it's the longest route through the path. And look at point one there. It's based on dependencies. So you are basically looking at when you're making your estimates of the duration, how long each activity is going to take. Yeah, how long is it going to take for deliveries of materials? Yeah, you know, labor, other resources, seasonal factors, again, construction projects. You might estimate something's going to take four weeks and you think the weather is going to be fine and suddenly it rains for four weeks, you've got a problem. The diagram causes major issues for students. So again, keep it simple. There are circles, the circles are called nodes. Now the circles have an individual number and then they are split on the right hand side. The top section is called the early start time. Bottom section is called the latest finish time. And number is basically the node number. Now the diagram you draw is obviously these days produced by a software program. But for you guys, unfortunately, you're going to have to be able to manipulate one uh, using a pen. You do not have to be able to draw these diagrams from scratch, okay, from the beginning. You'll have the outline of the diagram and there will be data and you have to basically fill it in and complete the diagram, as we'll show you. 
uh, but it all starts at node one, which will be zero, zero. Okay, and then you have an activity, you go to a node, and again, the various activities. The activities normally have a letter, and in this example, it's activity D, an elapsed time of activity, how long is it going to take? So the earliest start time of D here is 14, be that days, weeks, whatever. The latest finish time of the previous activity is eight. Was that 16 or 18? Quite worrying, I have to get an eyesight test, I think. Now, because there's a difference between the top and the bottom, okay, means there's floats. Okay, activities can be delayed. You will also be expected to calculate floats. There are two separate types of floats total float and free float. You need to know the definition of both and how to calculate them. So as it says, total float, the amount of time a task can be delayed without affecting the completion date of the project. Yeah, total float, accumulated float up to a specific task, and there's the formula. Um, take a look at it, fairly simple arithmetic, but you need to be able to basically calculate that, know what it is, and what's coming up is called free float again, same idea. Now the only difference with free floats is it's time of task can be delayed without affecting the start date of the subsequent task, the next task, and a slightly different calculation. But make sure you can calculate free floats and total floats. The evaluation is fairly straightforward to be honest with you. Uh, if you work through this, I'm not really going to start sort of you know saying a lot more. It's fairly self-explanatory. Uh, if not check your notes check your books okay chase the teacher down because again i'll be amazed if this is not anywhere in the exam if you watched our video on decision trees we've got a similar approach here uh items one to item seven that's basically how to complete a critical path and just to finish off there will be an example first thing apologies for the diagram uh, two things really one my incompetence not being able to produce those circles and split them on a computer and two you can see I was thrown out of art at the age of 11 not particularly impressive however here's an example of what's called a network diagram now what causes the issue in the exam is the diagram you will be given the outline now worst case scenario you have that outline with the node numbers one two three four etc and there would be just be A, B, C, yeah, D, E, F, etc. And a table with A2, B4. Now, all you need to do is then fill the numbers in below its letter. Now, technique. Step one, find the longest route. Now, please, as an examiner, I've seen it, and also in class on news occasions, write down it doesn't matter if it happens in the exam so a c f g i add it up a d f g i a d f h i a c f h i and b e h i now just you know write those down quickly and write down the numbers you'll find the longest route is b e h i that is the critical path now you have to annotate it. I've annotated it here in red. Obviously in the exam you've got a black pen. You have to write in black ink. It's two dashes like that. That shows it's a critical path. Now along that route, all of those activities are critical. There's no margin for error. They have to be completed on time if the project is not to be delayed, the completion of the overall project. Now the technique to work out the early start time is Okay, work left to right, and you add. So if you look at node three, the early start time, the top quadrant, will be four, because B is four. Okay. Now, because there's no margin of error, no float time, the latest finish time will have to be four as well. So node three, that will be four and four. Now, what does that actually mean? The bottom section is the latest finish time. So the latest finish time of B is 4. 
The early start time of E is four, be that hours, weeks, days, etc. So in other words, B has to finish on time so E can start on time. Then you add it's four and four in node three, and E is four, so again it was still going for EST, the top part. You add four. So node five, that then becomes eight and eight. Now then you go via H, which is three, eight and three is 11. So node 11 will be, so I try again, node six will be 11, 11. Now activity I is one. So the overall project in node seven, that will be 12 and 12. Now do not get put off by the terminology. So if node three is four and four, that simply means the early start time of E, activity E is four. The latest finish time of B is four. Now once you've got the critical path, it then becomes easy. So to work out nodes four, nodes two, again, if you go from node one, you add. So node two becomes, yeah, two. Yeah, activity C is three. Again, add two plus three is five. Now work backwards from four, four take two is two, and you've completed the diagram. So let's just review this just at the end and go back to what you need to know. What is critical path? Why is it used? Now the main advantage of this is, look at this diagram, you can check this obviously on a computer with the software to check your progress on the activities each morning. Now if you find out one of the critical activities behind schedule, because there is float time, okay, notes two and notes four, okay, activities can be delayed. Now you notice float because there's a different value, the early start time and later finish time, they're two different figures. So you know you can take resources from uh, those resources working on DE, etc. and A. Now transfer those resources across to BEHI because their critical activities have to be completed on time. And the non-critical activities have a margin of error. They can be delayed by a certain amount. So understand what the technique is, why it's used, and what the advantage of it is in terms of efficiency of managing your project, a very large scale project with multiple activities to be completed on time. Um, then you need to know how to fill the diagram in. And if you actually follow this, it works on every occasion. Okay. Critical activity, non-critical activity. Uh, follow it through, okay? Uh, left to right, right to left, EST, LFT. Watch out for simultaneous activities. Now that is C and D, for example, which are non-critical. Okay, so if you're tracking back, because the critical path is the longest route, if you're subtracting coming backwards from node four, you would use three, the value on C. You always take the higher amount, okay? Um, but again, hopefully this has been gone through in class. And the only other things are total float and free float. From a diagram, make sure you can calculate the total float and free float at a particular point. I mean, please do not get put off by this. IB changed the syllabus approximately five years. Uh, this was taken off the old syllabus, which finished uh, last exam last year. And it's been reintroduced. Why? They know it causes problems. But if you follow the simple steps here and break it down to what this actually is, this is not scary monsters. Now, as usual, guys, hopefully this has been some use as a revision tool. Uh, please keep your eyes out on the channel. There's more coming to help you guys out.